We've been tasked with the finding and protecting of over five million pieces of stolen artwork. This is a model of his planned Führer Museum. It will be one of the biggest in the world. We need a lot of art to fill it. This is why Hitler didn't bomb Paris. Well, he bombed London. Yes, I know. <laughs> How conscious were you about all of you having to combine, you know, referencing the seriousness of the war, but also still trying to emphasize the importance of the culture that you guys were trying to save in the movie? Yeah, I mean, that was really, uh, you know, in terms, of, in terms of the tone of the film, it was, I think, I think it works because the, the humor feels like the kind of gallows humor that soldiers really have in those situations. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and that's the central question of the movie too, is, 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 you know, the two questions would be what role does art play in, in our society, in our culture, and, 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 and the other one is, is it worth dying for? You can wipe out an entire generation, you can burn their homes to the ground, and somehow they'll still find their way back. But if you destroy their history, you destroy their achievements, then it's as if they never existed. That's what Hitler wants. That is exactly what we're fighting for. Tonally, it's a really difficult movie because you want it to be really fun and entertaining and kind of have all those aspects of a heist movie like Ocean's Eleven. But you want it to be a war movie and be kind of, you want the, you need it to feel like, it, you know, you that the subject matter is being taken seriously and that the stakes are incredibly high because they were. You want to get in the war? Monuments, man. Signed by Roosevelt. Oh, I see that. And to put a team together and try to protect what's left and find what's missing. Aren't you a little old for that? Yes. You want to go into a war zone and tell our boys what they can and cannot blow up? That's the idea. Okay, how many men? For now, six. Jesus. Mm. With you, that's seven. <laughs> that's much better. I grew up during the Vietnam War movies, and, and so those were, you know, so the, the World War II movies seemed kind of quaint, <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, mm. And, uh, and, and kind of un... They, they didn't seem... They, they didn't really... I couldn't really relate to them, whereas the Vietnam movies I could, because mm. that was the culture I was growing up in. Mm. Um, you know, like, we never would have made a movie like Private Ryan in 1950, hmm. you know, um, but coming through the other side of Vietnam and having a society that kind of understood, you know, what war really looked like, and, um, then you could make that movie. What happened to the war, Sergeant? Bloody hell. We go through basic in England. Basic training. Oh, boy. Uh, it's right here. Now, Matt, I've got a, a slightly off-topic question, if that's okay. Um, I know you've been longtime friends with Matthew McConaughey, and I've seen you do great impressions of him. And seeing as the Oscars is coming up, I was wondering if there was any way I could tempt you to do a Matthew McConaughey Oscars acceptance speech. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, let's see. I, I just worked with him recently, and I was like, you have to do an imitation of me, because he can do a perfect imitation <laughs> of me, but he, doesn't, he hasn't ever tried it publicly. Um, uh, so no, I don't know, I, I, I would have to think about that one. I'd just like to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I say? This is totally unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks.